This is the sandblasting gun that I come up with here several months ago and I, I did a video of me machining the first prototype. Now after that I did several videos demonstrating this in my dry blasting cabinet and it looks familiar. It's basically the same design as the first prototype but uh, it's slightly different. This is a second revision. I changed it from a threaded barb fitting for the suction inlet to a straight stainless pipe. And that's what you see right here. Now, I designed this for a couple different uses. Now, the first one, of course, was to use in a dry sandblasting cabinet. But I also made it so it could be used in a vapor blasting cabinet, which is uh, a wet blasting type of application. And that's why I use corrosion resistant material. This is stainless, this is, or this is aluminum, this is stainless, and so is this. And this is boron carbide. Uh, none of those materials will corrode very easily under ordinary circumstances. So I made it for those two applications. Uh, and the reason I'm going over this again today, and I'll try to keep it brief here, which is kind of difficult for me, but the reason I'm going over this again is because I had a new customer get a hold of me here a few weeks ago, and he has a dry blasting cabinet so he wanted me to machine one of these for him uh, but he also has a or he's building a vapor blasting cabinet that he's also going to use this in so that's fine I mean you can switch from one cabinet to the other and use one nozzle uh, you might have to change the internal jet and the nozzle size depending on what you're doing but that's you know that's part of the process but why I'm showing you this again is because this customer wants to use this for an additional application that this really wasn't designed for. What he wants to do is adapt this to a high pressure washer such as this one here. Now his is of course a different model but he wants to adapt this to a high pressure washer so you can do wet blasting outside. Say if you have a car frame or uh, body panels or it doesn't matter what it is but if you want to sandblast stuff outside do dustless wet blasting you can do it with this. Now, when he initially told me about that, I said, this sandblasting gun isn't really designed for that, but I will look into it, you know, tell me what you want and what you want to hook it to, and I'll see what I can do with it. So he sent me some more information, some photos of what he wanted to do, and I went to the drawing board, uh, so to speak, and come up with an adapter that makes this so you can hook it to... Uh, a high pressure washer like this one. So that's why I want to show you this and I want to do some demonstrations to show you that this does work. Now this adapter I made here is designed especially for my pressure washer and you can see the rating is right there two gallons a minute at 2500 psi. Now his is 1900 at 1 1.5 gallons per minute. So I'm going to have to machine him a separate a separate adapter that's designed just for his machine. So let's go ahead, I want to show you the setup and do a demonstration and I think you'll find it interesting. So I set this up and the first thing I did is I started the pressure washer and I, I, I didn't have this hose on here at first. What I did was I started up and initiated the water flow and put my thumb over the, the uh, suction inlet and it's pulling a lot of suction which is a good thing because of course it needs to pull the uh, abrasive out of this bucket. Now in this bucket here I have uh, it's, it's they call it black beauty it's just coal slag real fine stuff and I borrowed this setup here this is some half inch ID rubber tubing that I got from a cheap siphon blaster I've had for years I don't use it very much but this is just one of these cheap siphon blasters that you know you can pick up just about anywhere really including this tube here nothing fancy it's one of those double tubes that allows air to go into your abrasive and pick it up so this has a lot of suction and the one thing I wanted to point out is of course I have it set up Let's see if I can show you here here's the the entire gun and you'll notice how I have the suction inlet mounted to the top now I read some things about these and the people say you always want to mount this suction inlet so it, it's facing straight up. You don't want it to, to face down because what happens is any water that happens to drip inside here will drip down and get into the tubing 
and then it will plug up the abrasive, you know, like how wet sand packs in. And that's what happens. So you always put them on the top, and that's what I'm doing here. So I just ran this, and it does work. So I want to do a small demonstration here to show you uh, that it does work. And it actually has a lot of pulling power, more so than what air does. It sucks a lot of abrasive out of here. And what happens sometimes if it quits blasting is it actually sucks all the abrasive out to the bottom. Then I have to move it around so it'll start blasting again. But it does work. And the only thing I have to be careful of is splashing so water doesn't get back in this bucket. But, you know, that's no big deal. Yeah, it sucked the abrasive clear to the bottom of the bucket there, and I had to move that over to get more, but that's, you know, that's typical. But it's, it's you know, it's, it's moving a lot of abrasive, a lot more than I thought it would. And, I mean, that's a good thing, too, because your blasting efficiency tends to be dependent on how much abrasive you can move. So, I mean, that cleaned that. This is heavy rust, too. This isn't real, this isn't thin stuff. This sheet's been laying out here for a few years, and it's real rough. Um, scale and this is real smooth here so if you thought that first piece of steel was bad uh, this piece of steel here on the right that little square piece it's been sitting outside of the shop for about 18 years so it is really rusted and then the red piece is a part that I cut off my brush hog when I was modifying it and that will be in another video by the way but I want to show you that it can also strip paint And you can see here how that turned out. Like I said, that was really heavily scaled after 18 years of sitting out. And you're still pitting in it, of course, you're going to have that. But um, the pitting was a result of the corrosion. But it's real smooth. Most parts of it smooth. And then here's the that part of that brush hog, bush hog, whatever you want to call it. Took all of that. Now I noticed it didn't take off some of the mill. The um, I don't know what they call it, mill scale or whatever. It's smooth, but it's a real hard coating that whenever they um, hot roll steel, sometimes that gets on there. I'm not sure why or what process or if they apply that afterward, you know, put it in some sort of chemical. But anyway, it didn't strip that off. And that is more of a, sometimes that has something to do with the, the abrasive itself, not the technique. If you use a harder abrasive, they'll probably strip that off a lot faster. But it stripped, it welds off everything. You can see the original sloppy fabrication work that they did there. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, a little bit more just to show you what it can do.
Not sure why I did that. It just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. So last night I was running some tests with this to see if you know to see if it would work, proof of concept type of thing. And I had just put my thumb over the inlet to see if it was drawing a vacuum, and it was a pretty strong vacuum actually. With the type of nozzle I had, this is the nozzle part right here. The actual outlet is called the nozzle, and I get those in various sizes. I have custom made. Now the one I was using was pulling a pretty good vacuum, so it had no problem uh, getting the abrasive in. But it, it's small. It's it's a relatively small nozzle, and I. So I was getting a, a small pattern when I was spraying the steel. Now, what I wanted to try was a slightly larger nozzle to see if I could spread that blasting pattern out. So I changed this out for a little bit of a, a bigger nozzle. And I checked the blasting pattern. It really wasn't... It was pretty much centralized like with a smaller nozzle. Uh, it made a bigger spray pattern but didn't have much of an effect. It also wasn't pulling as much of an... Uh, it also wasn't pulling as much abrasive as the small one. So I got interested. I put my thumb over this again and felt that it was pulling a vacuum, but not. it seemed like it wasn't quite as much. So I decided to run an actual test with a vacuum gauge here to see if there's a difference. Now, I have the larger nozzle in here right now, and I want to show you the difference between the, the big nozzle and the smaller nozzle to show you the difference here. Um, so I'm going to start this pressure washer up and we'll run a test here. Okay, it was pulling about five inches of mercury. Not real impressive, but it's enough to draw a abrasive out of that bucket. Now I'm going to change out this this uh, nozzle here for the larger one. It's kind of difficult trying to hold everything in view of the camera and do it because I only have two arms and I can't find my wrenches here. Okay, so I'm going to take this one out and put the other one in. This is boron carbide, by the way. This is extremely hard material. Uh, it's up there with, well, it's harder than tungsten carbide. Not too much softer than diamond, actually. And the only drawback it has is it's fairly brittle. It's almost like glass. So anyway, but they work really well. Okay, so here's the number two test. And that, like I said, that is the smaller nozzle that I first tried. And let's see how many or how much vacuum we get. Now you notice I was pull, pulling about 14. I was pulling 15 before when I ran this test, so I have a leak here somewhere. I don't have a real good setup. This is just some threads and an old hose here. And it's not real tight on there, so I think I'm losing some vacuum. But basically I wanted to demonstrate a relative measurement between the two nozzles. So the last time uh, before I turned the camera on, I was getting 5 inches of mercury with the other nozzle. And then... I was getting 15 with this nozzle. It is pulling a considerably higher amount of vacuum which helps with your abrasive draw. And I really didn't notice much of a difference on the pattern when spraying the steel between those two. Uh, it seemed to be about the same. So anyway, I wanted to show you that. That's one of the little nuances of designing things like this, trying to find out what works best.